Welcome to my workshop. This is part number two in a series where I'm making the smallest oscillating steam engine that I can. Uh, in part number one I already made the, the crankshaft through here. In this part we're going to make the, the main body here, so this, this section and the radius and just here. Now the crankshaft is already done, we did that in part number one. I'll try and get in camera there. I've got it sitting in a lump of grease so I don't lose it. The, um, the big end journal 0.8 millimeters and the, the main bearing diameter here is, is 1.5 millimeters. So it's quite small. So, all right, so the, the main body, the main body here, uh, the crank fits through here. This is the bearing. Now I'm choosing to do it all out of one piece because most of these small engines that I see fail, um, even like, you know, commercially available ones, they always seem to fail on a welded joint somewhere. So either where it's been soft soldered or silver soldered or where something's been pressed in. So I make them, because they're so small, there's no real issue with material. So I make them out of a solid piece that way. That's one less thing to fail. Now, this um, pivot here I'll do in the milling machine later. Uh, basically, uh, the two portholes here I'm going to match by drilling through the cylinder once it's actually fully assembled that way. Uh, basically, you, you know it's going to line up perfectly. Now, uh, this will all be done out of one piece and the I'll turn this in a lathe, leaving material you know, in a, in a diameter about 23 millimeters and then I'll grip that in a collet which I'll show on the whiteboard in a second and then I'll do this milling work. So basically this radius out here, everything will get milled off and I'll mill the sides, the end and then I'll put that radius on the end. I'll put it back in the lathe then and I'll hold with a uh, with a collet in the lathe, I'll hold this little diamond here and get a little boring bar, a little three or four millimeter boring bar and I'll, I'll machine that undercut in there for the crank actually fits in. I'll grab the whiteboard. Now uh, the red is obviously indicating one inch uh, uh, phosphorus bronze stock. Now I'm going to turn this this part uh, so basically it can be gripped later on in a you know, C5 uh, you know, collet block in the mill or the, or the lathe. Now I'm going to turn this uh, this diameter here 23 mil and basically what I'm going to do is turn this complete so this will be the bearing diameter on the inside be one and a half millimeters. Um, this outside diameter doesn't actually serve a purpose except I'm going to hold this later on in a collet and do a counter bore at the front. So basically I'm going to turn all this in, in one setup and I'm going to undercut the back so that later on I can hold this in a collet chuck on that side. Uh, basically uh, then I'll put that up in the milling machine and with a cutter from this end I'll mill off everything I don't want leaving only the, the, you know, the this finished product. So basically there'll be a radius around the back there. Now this bore here I don't actually have a reamer, a one and a half millimeter reamer to match the, uh, the crank. So what I've done, uh, I'm not going to do it on camera but I'll just show you. Um, I have a 1.4 millimeter drill and a 1.5. Now what I've done, I'll, I'll center it with a uh, with a D bit. So I've got a custom ground D bit here. So basically I'll use this D bit and uh, that'll center it. And what I've done is I've stoned the edge off of this drill. So basically the, the drill will um, act more like a reamer. If you, if you lower the RPM and increase the feed rate, so basically the flute or the side of the drill starts cutting instead of the front, they cut pretty accurately. So I've already done a sample on this one, which I'll, I'll show you the video, and it's, it's spot on. The crank fits in there and there's almost no play at all, basically enough room for oil and nothing else. So yeah, it should be, should be okay. So that's, that's my approach. Um, I could grind a three-pointed reamer or similar, but hey, this is going to work for what I'm doing. The, um, the bearing surface is eight millimeters long, so on a one and a half millimeter diameter, you'd have to get a, you know, a reasonable amount of wear before the engine will fail or stop running. So anyway, I'll uh, take you through it. Okay, so I'm at the lathe. I'm just taking a moment to set up a few tools before I tackle this job. Now, I've got my, my 
tool steel turning tool in here which you'll see in the, the last video I, I grind a fair bit of rake uh, for doing small work especially I grind quite a bit of rake on the, the job and then I stone about a one or a two thou or you know point 0.02 to 0.05 radius on the on the front of the tool so basically it's you can turn very very small parts without leaving a radius in the corner now now I take a bit of time and I use a you know a, a driller's looper an eyepiece like this and I, I face just a random piece of material a bit of brass or whatever and I make sure that one tool is is bang on so there's no pip you know with, with a with a, a eyepiece you can really see if it's on center now the reason I this next step when you see the dial indicator here is because tools like this that are facing the opposite direction it's hard to you know set them to the center height bang on so I mean it's not so crucial for this back diameter but a little trick I thought I'd cover is I throw a, a dial indicator on the on the bed and I'll just zoom in so you can see here and what I do is once I've got one tool right I run the dial just very gently and you'll see you'll see that dial right up to zero now just as it goes over that edge as long as you don't drop the plunger on the tool it won't actually blunten it so now you can basically I can change these tools out because uh, I've got a quick change tool post and I can put another tool in doesn't matter which way it's facing and as I clock over that same point the dial indicator will tell me if it's on center or not so I can adjust it up so rather than just sort of shoot from the hip and hope for the best um, you know doing this way you can guarantee that this tool is going to be within within you know 01 or a millimeter or half a thou sort of thing of center height so it's it works every time you know okay I've got this second tool set up and I'll just run that dial over it and you'll see the dial rise and just as it goes over the highest point and once you get to the highest point if you just wind in or out a little bit you'll see that is in fact the highest part of the tool and it's exactly the same height as the other the other tool so as long as you don't take the dial indicator off the bed while you're setting your tools it has to be exactly the same Okay, so I've just skimmed the outside and I'm just going to take a moment to mic the outside so I can set my digital readout just so I know the diameter uh, you know, that tool's at. Now, I've got to apologise about the background noise. We've got a storm rolling through at the moment and the rain is absolutely pounding my workshop. That's what the, the noise is. Now I've decided to leave this uh, one and a half millimeter hole till afterwards. Um, it dawned on me that I've, I've got to hold this with a collet to machine that front section for the the cutout for the for the crankshaft. So if I leave this solid, it'll be a little bit stronger. And what I'll do is while I'm holding this, I'll uh, I'll drill and ream from the front in the you know the, one of the last steps, and then I'll machine that cutout at the front. So I'm going to leave that solid for now, and, and uh, just for strength reasons. So I'll, I'll change tools now and I'll turn this back section in here. So basically I'll leave this uh, about 
10 millimeters long and then I'll do a, about a 16 millimeter diameter about 16 millimeters long at the back so come back to about here. Now I'm just going to set this tool so I know this distance back. I'm just going to hold another piece of uh, ground stock here and just hold it against that face and just come forward towards it till I feel it I feel it touch and if I slide this one back I'll just feel it clip. Okay, I can feel it just touching now, so I'll call that zero. Now I know the outside is about five hundredths or two thou under twenty-three millimeters, so I'll just come back in about the distance I want. I'll go in till I touch that and then I'll set that 22.95 diameter. And I've already I've already mic'd that so I know what size it is. Okay, now I'll turn that back section. So I'll turn from about 10 millimeters in down to 16 millimeters in diameter and back here and then I'll part it off. I'll break these corners with a bit of wet and dry beforehand, but then that component's finished so I can take it over to the milling machine. Okay, so I'm back at the bench. Um, sorry about the audio. We've got a storm rolling through here, and it's uh, it's really been raining pretty hard. So I'll continue, and if you can bear with me. Um, all right. So you see, this is the part at this this stage. Um, so this little round diameter here. You'll see. Now I'm going to put this up and hold it with this diameter here, and then I'm going to machine these flats this end uh, I'll put this hole through from the back and I'll do this radius so basically I'll I'll put the the uh, C5 collet block in a rotary table to do all this work so I'll do this without moving anything and then I'll just swing the radius on the end so this uh, back section here see it goes down there nicely so I'll just nip that up in the vise and then I can take that over to the milling machine and drop it in the rotary table and I can do my work. Put the flat down each side, the radius on the back, flat on the front. I can do the hold through the back, all in one operation. So I'll get it set up in the mill. Okay, so if you guys have seen some of my other videos, 
we all have seen this um, setup before, but I'll go through it. I um, I normally for this small work, I normally use uh, this this little rotary table. I've got a 12-inch one as well, but this one's a little bit quicker um, for doing this sort of thing. Also, I have this uh, V-block, this ground V-block, pretty much permanently set up on here. And basically, if you're doing this sort of work and it's small, you can just drop that in there. And I have a, a purpose-made uh, clamp and a piece of an old V-block that goes on that side. So basically, I put that there, I put this around the back, and I just put the screw opposed to it and I nip that up. And it, it holds it nice and firm. And uh, basically, the uh, the whole thing rotates. You can still get to the clamps, so it works really well. It holds vertical, and because I've taken all the time to set this V block up, basically that'll be running dead true anyway. I'll put a dial on it anyway, and just check that there's no error crept in somewhere. But generally, it'll be running within 0102, so I'll check that, and uh, then I'll get on with setting the rest of it up. So I've got the dial on it. And uh, it's within about 0102 straight away, so I'll just leave it, leave it as it is. It's not worth touching. Okay, so I've got the dial set up. I've picked up center on here. Now, this dial's probably overkill. It's, um, it's a two micron per division dial, so you know. Uh, here to here is one thou imperial, so it's pretty accurate. So that's that's reading no error around there. So I'm going to go ahead and call that zero on the digital readout, and then I'll I'll throw a, a cutter up in there. I'll probably just use maybe an eight or a ten millimeter cutter. It's ample for this. Um, got to pull a fair bit of material off, but it's not you know in the scheme of things, it's not that much.
Okay, so the milling's finished. Um, this uh, radius has come out really nice. I just need to put a 1.2 millimeter hole uh, just, just back from center, uh, round about here. And then I'll take it out and I'll cut this off with a, just with the hacksaw and the vise. And then I'll, maybe before I do that, I'll spend a little bit of time breaking any burrs that are around here. And then I'll sort of parallel strip along this, this face here. Uh, by parallel, could very well be a, a hardened and ground dowel pin. Anything that's narrower than this, uh, basically in my tiny little uh, toolmaker's vise. The, the entire vise is this long. So I'll grip that and flat against this face and I'll fly cut that back face to the, the finished thickness. Um, then I'll turn it around and I'll grip it between that face and the other face and I'll put the counter bore that goes in the back here basically to accept the, either a stand off to hold the entire engine in the boiler or there'll be a copper feed line running it so but uh, yeah I'll go ahead and drill that hole. Okay so you can see I've got the, the drill truck set up now and I've got a, a D bit here now this is a, a three millimeter D bit it's been ground out of a broken um, uh, three millimeter tungsten uh, end mill so basically it's been the end mill's been snapped off and I've ground this in a tool and cutter grinder so if you're not aware of what these are you grind the flat that you can see there the flat is at the halfway point so you would mark that so if that's three millimeters you'd grind that little short flat there until it's one and a half millimeters from this front edge and then you grind the taper that you want and once you've got the taper you rotate the the bit slightly and then you allow the wheel to grind, uh, grind a land that's behind there and then you go and rotate it so if you should be able to see on the camera there's an actual land and everything that's behind that land is actually clearance so so yeah they, they cut really well and it'll center the smallest of drills like if you had a 0.25 or a 0.3 drill it'll center it no problem at all it's not like a center drill where they where they have like a, a parallel section and then a then a taper and then they've still got a bit of a land at the front these go to a complete point so they're pretty good for doing sort of thing but anyway I'll, uh, I'll put that hole in there Okay, so I've got the part set up in the, the bench vise there. I'm just going to take a moment to get some wet and dry and break those corners on the back while it's attached to the, the main bit of material. It's a lot easier to hold this way. Okay, so I'm back at the bench and you can see this is the little vise I was talking about. Now, because the part's so small, standard parallel strip that you would use uh, in a vise just won't do so what I'll do is I take a, a hardened you know, precision ground dowel pin and I slip that in there now this little vise is going to I built this maybe back in 2007 um, now it's got two adjusting screws you've got a, a free floating nut inside here and there's a you can either do it up from here if you get access or you can do it up from here obviously you've got limited adjustment here but basically you, you can uh, Depending on where you're working, sometimes in a tricky environment, you can tighten it from either way. But here I'm going to uh, just sit that in the top like that. I'm going to push the dowel up as far as I can to get as much support as I can. And then I'm going to hold that down. Just like that. Now I'll put that vise in another vise and uh, machine the top. And then I'll turn it side on and then I'll do the port that goes through the side. Uh, there's, I think there's two ports from my drawing. One's uh, for exhaust and one is for uh, the standoff or the, the copper feed line. But anyway, I'll put that up in the milling machine. Okay, so I've got the little vise set up inside of my other vise. Um, 
I have a bigger vice than this, but I like to use this one for shooting video because it's you can get your hands in without being obstructed. Now, you see I've got some parallels here, but once I've got it sitting there, I use a piece of brass just to tap it around to get it perfect. Now, this dial indicator is um, it's, it's my you know, two micron division dial. So what I'm going to do is just clock this pad and along here. And if there's any error, I'll just give it a bit of a tap. Um, and if there's if there's any uh, you know, error this way, I can get rid of that just by putting a little bit more tension and a little bit less tension on the vise as well. Being a little vise, it, it flexes a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. So, and the cutting loads are, are very, very small. So I'm just going to go and clock this now. This dial is incredibly accurate. If there's any error there, it'll it'll find it. You know, it's this one's five times more accurate than a standard dial indicator. So. Now, because of the size of the part, it's difficult to actually get in there and measure it. Um, you know, the distance here. A uh, million ways you can do it. You can use a step mic from here to here if you know the depth inside. Uh, another way you can do it, because it's a precision ground vise, and I know the vise is flat because I've clocked it, I can I can mic uh, the thickness of the, the, the vise here. And I know that I've got a four millimeter precision ground dowel. And so then I can put a mic over this end and measure. So I've already done that. So. I know that the thickness here, and I know that this end here, uh, I, there's a size I've got to hit. It's about 1.68 millimeters to come off from where I've just cleaned up here. Perfect. Okay, so I pulled the part out, and um, because of its size, I've got to put a, a 2.5 millimeter pocket or a little counterbore right in there. And basically, that'll go through and hook up to the port where the where the engine um, basically uh, the steam comes through this way and then out through that port into the cylinder. Now, because of the size of the part, I want to get it down as far as I can in the vise and still have it you know, rigid. I don't want to spit the part out after spending hours making it. So I can't actually get my edge finder onto it because it's so small. So what I'm going to do is take the part out and I'm going to edge find that jaw first. And once I know where that jaw is, then I can um, I can set that in my digital readout. I can put the part in. I've measured it. It's exactly to the drawing. So it's 13.0 millimeters long. So once I've done that, I can use the edge finder and come off this radius and you know, pick up a you know, dimension uh, where I need to be down here. So that's what I'm going to have to do because it's so small. Uh, another way you could do it, I mean, it, it is just a port for steam. I could just use a, a three millimeter dowel and maybe a 10 times or 15 times optical eyepiece. And I could just shine light at the back of the, the mill and just look through with an eyepiece and just pick up the, the you know, when, the, when you see the daylight disappear on each side, you can call that zero on the digital readout as well if you want to pick up center. It's only a port for steam. allow for half the diameter of the edge finder and I'll call it zero.
I'm just jack the drawing the um, pockets only two millimeters deep so I'm just going to deal with a slot drill I'll go down with a two millimeter first and then I'll go down with a 2.5 right after So I've got the part out of the milling machine, um, now uh, I'll just try and keep it in focus, it's a bit difficult. Um, now it's it's mostly finished, it's just got a little cut out here at the front to do in the holder to drill through. So there's a one and a half millimetre hole that has to go through here. Uh, that's I'm going to use that uh, that drill that's been modified, so basically it'll um, you know, you know, act like a reamer. You know the drawing, you see here, uh, it's just got this, this little uh, uh, basically clearance section so the crankshaft actually sits in there now I'm just doing that so that the cylinder can be closer to this uh, this face and the whole idea is I want to keep as much mass out of any of the moving parts as I can because the engine's so small it's going to rev pretty hard and I don't know how many thousand rpm but it'll be a lot so I figure um, with uh, you know the big engine on the crankshaft is only 0 0.8 millimeters so you're talking 32 thou imperial so I want to I want to keep everything as small as possible so that the 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 cylinder uh, is is lightweight. Uh, the the piston and and you know basically the connecting rod is one item. So I'm going to keep all that as short as possible so that it's as close to the crank as possible so that that little 0.8 journal has less load on it. So I've got to do do that now. Now to hold it, I'm going to going to hold this three millimeter section here. Now I'll you know ideally what I wanted to do was to be able to use one of these collets. Now these aren't a C5 collet. You can see I've gone over this before. Um, these are an oddity, I don't know where they came from, but they're on my lathe when I bought it. So now unfortunately in the whole set I've got everything imperial and metric, but I do not have a three millimeter. Um, and so basically I can I can opt to make a, a little stepped collar or stepped uh, sleeve that goes inside this and put a one millimeter heck, uh, like a hacksaw cut in the sleeve so it closes up. Now that's okay as long as you turn the outside and you bore the hole on the inside as well. If you just try and drill it, yeah, it'll hold all right, but you really want to turn the whole thing so inside and out. Alternatively, I can use one of these uh, hexagonal C5 collet blocks. Now, this one's hexagonal, so you can hold it in the three jaw. If you've got a three jaw that runs nicely, you can you can use this. Now, you are going to have to grip it and maybe maybe give it a tap around with a piece of brass to get it running true. So, in this case, I can grip that guy like that. Now, I can clock this front edge here. And I can all because there's nothing here to clock. I can clock the outside of the collar because it's all precision ground. Um, you know, as long as you don't have uh, too much load on your dial, it won't skip too badly as it goes over these joints. Um, if I can't get that to run true, if you see another shot where I'm using a four jaw, that's because I couldn't get it to run as true as I'd like, and I'll just swap this collar into here and then set this up in the four jaw. Uh, the problem with the four jaw, I don't want to you know, run this at, at high RPM, so I'm trying not to use the four jaw. So anyway. Um, once I've got that in there, I'm going to use one of my little boring bars. And if you've seen my videos before, you will have seen I use these little tungsten cardboard boring bars. I grind these on a tool and cutter grinder, basically similar to my D bits. I grind them out of a uh, an old broken, uh, you know, uh, slot drill or end mill. So I'm going to use this guy. Um, now I have these blocks that basically I've got a, a number of different holes you can put these in, different sizes and whatnot. It lets you hold a a tiny little bar in your lathe quite easily. So basically I'm going to get in the front there and, and do that, that little cutout and then I'm going to pull through. So stay with me, I'll put it in the lathe. Okay, so I've got this set up. It's pretty good. This is my two micron division dial, so it's, you're seeing two or four microns run out, so not even halfway one, it's pretty good. 
I'll just move the uh, dial and I'll check the outside. Okay, so I'm going to use that D bit to center that hole first. Um, then I'm going to put the 1.4 millimeter drill through. Then I'll complete the uh, the turning of that that clearance area. And then the last step, I'll put the one and a half millimeter modified drill through to hold its size. Now I'm just drilling it first so that the boring bar doesn't actually have to face to center. <laughs> Okay, so I've spent a bit of time deburring the part. You can see here I've, I've just knocked these edges off. Now I just used a 3M uh, deburring wheel uh, on, on the bench grinder. It's like an abrasive felt, I guess, just to like, remove a majority of the burr. And then I've just basically wet and dried the corner. You, know, you can see here, uh, it, it's a bit square looking for my liking. So maybe once it's finished and I, I can see how everything's going to sit, I might break these back corners, put a chamfer, or maybe make a little form tool and put a radius down, down these corners just to dress it up a little bit. So, yeah, it's a tidy looking part. Now, I'll just install the crank so you can see that. There you go. So, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful little fit. Like, there's no there's no clearance in it. So, just enough room for oil. Now, what I'll do is, I'll once it's finished, I'll uh, I'll drill a little oil hole through the top here. I've got a, a high-speed drill, like a half-size drill press that does 20,000 RPM. So, it's ideal for doing tiny little you know, oil holes and whatnot. So, I'll, uh, I'll do that uh, later on. 
But um, on a side note, I, I got asked about my, my steam powered phone charger that I built. I did a couple of videos on components for it, but uh, I was building this, the phone charge to a deadline, so I'll do a, uh, a run up video, uh, sorry, a follow up video, um, you know, showing uh, how it was built and why it was built. But basically, it was a, it was a dare by one of my friends, so uh, I took the dare and, and to charge our mobile phones off of a campfire, and 650 hours later, the, uh, the phone charger exists. So, uh, yeah, I'll do a video, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, if you, if you like this video and found it helpful, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.